Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Trailblazer has finally found the harmony path with their meta-breaking dance moves and game-changing super break mechanic. It's the first time we've seen this and its potential for fun and strength definitely broke my expectations. This guide will walk you through what this super break mechanic is and how Harmony Trailblazer works, plus of course their Eidolons, Best Relic and Light Cone builds, team synergies, gameplay tips, and more. A quick note as well that the footage here is taken on the Creator Experience server. With that, let's begin. This is the new imaginary version of the Trailblazer or MC of the Harmony Path that introduces the brand new Super Break mechanic, which offers a refreshingly fun way to spice up your teams and playstyles. To start with her kit, let's first understand how this whole Super Break thing works. When Harmony Trailblazer uses their ultimate, this grants your team the backup dancer effect. It lasts for 3 turns and the countdown is dependent on the Trailblazer's own turns. While it's active, all allies get a break effect increase, but more importantly, they're able to deal Super Break damage. Super break can only be dealt by attacking an enemy that's in their weakness broken state, and the damage will correspond to the attacker's element. It doesn't matter if the enemy is weak to that element or not, as long as they are broken. So in general, it's best to time their ultimate when the enemy is about to be or currently broken so as not to waste its countdown. The damage scaling shares many similarities to how regular break effect works but with key differences. The common factors are that the higher a character's level, the higher the super break's base damage. It's also not affected by elemental or all type damage percent bonuses or crit stats, but is affected by break effect percent stat plus defense, resistance, and vulnerability related debuffs on the target. The most important difference is that the strength of super break is partly determined by how much toughness damage the attack possesses. Even if you're technically not reducing the enemy's toughness anymore when they're broken, attacks still have their innate toughness damage which is factored in. To demonstrate, if we compare Gallagher's basic attack versus his enhanced basic attack which deals more toughness damage, the super break is higher. If multiple enemies also get hit, then each of those hits can also deal super break based on each hit's respective toughness damage. For example, blast attacks with higher toughness damage on the center target have higher damage potential. If an attack action hit breaks an enemy, then the hits that land from the same action after being broken will still count towards dealing a super break. Another difference is that super break damage does not scale on the enemy's toughness bar. A normal break even from the same unit can vary in damage depending on how much toughness the target has, which is because of the max toughness multiplier of regular breaks. Now what mainly matters is how much toughness damage the actual attack deals. Lastly, it no longer has those break damage base multiplier differences like with how physical and fire have a times 2 multiplier going down all the way to quantum and imaginary having 0.5 times. Basically, it's now more consistent throughout different enemy types and across different elements. When you unlock their Ascension 2 ability, Dance with a 1, this further boosts super break damage based on the number of enemies. The less enemies there are, the bigger the damage increase. It's fair to say that this mechanic is quite game changing, and the possibilities it opens up feel fresh and exciting. Anyway, we'll discuss more about its synergies later, but let's cover the rest of the kit. Trailblazer's skill is a bounce type attack where it deals initial damage to your main target, followed by 4 random random bounces on any of the enemies, which scale on their attack. The initial hit deals toughness damage equivalent to a basic attack, then the bounce hits each deal half of that. When you unlock their Ascension 4 ability, the initial hit's toughness damage is doubled, so that's faster breaking and stronger super breaks. Harmony MC's build is more focused on break effect stats, so their skill's damage mainly comes from super break, especially since it deals a lot of toughness damage. Since it's a bounce attack too, there is some element of RNG involved in AoE mobs. You can reduce or eliminate that RNG by narrowing down the number of enemies present. The basic attack is the usual trace and toughness damage with no special effects. Use the skill if you want to break imaginary weak enemies faster or deal higher super break damage, but if you want SP generation more, insert basic attacks as necessary. For their talent, they get an energy refund anytime a teammate deals a weakness break to an enemy. It's a very helpful effect for Trailblazer's alt recharge times, especially with a relatively higher than average 140 energy cost. After unlocking their final Ascension 6 ability, any ally's weakness break will cause that enemy's action to be additionally delayed by 30%, which has offensive and defensive benefits. Delaying the enemy action will cause them to remain broken longer, which can let you get in more regular plus super break attacks while they're broken. That also means delaying 
potential enemy attacks against your team. As for their technique, using it simply gives your entire team a 30% break effect bonus for two turns at the start of battle. To make the most of it, you'll ideally want to break and start dealing super breaks on enemies before the buff expires. For their minor stat traces, they get a lot of break effect, which is very helpful. Then there's imaginary damage, but remember that this doesn't affect super break damage and some effect resistance, which is nice for added debuff protection. Focus on leveling their ultimate trace to increase their team break effect buff and the talent to help their energy generation. The skill is lower priority as that only increases the attack scaling damage and the basic attack can be left alone. As you can imagine, Harmony MC synergizes extremely well with teams that are suited to breaking enemies as quickly and frequently as possible and are naturally compatible with break effect focused builds. They are giving the break effect stat more value and uses now beyond just affecting the initial break damage plus break debuff applied, which are more limited. Instead, super breaks now enable a way to deal break type damage in between the enemy's weakness break and recovery from break. It opens up incredible potential synergy with future break related units and more more importantly, it breathes new life into the value of units who had break effect niche potential but aren't as popular. Whether their teammate is a DPS, support, or sustain, as long as they have attacking abilities, they have the potential to join in on the fun. So let's take a look at Eidolons, some of which offer incredible upgrades. These are all free and unlockable through game progression. E1 is a one-time SP refund for the first skill in every battle, so that helps with SP management, especially if you have SP-heavy starting setups. E2 gives Trailblazer a 25% percent energy regeneration rate or ERR buff at the start of battle for three turns. That's a big boost for their starting energy to more easily set up their ultimate casts. E3 increases their skill and talent levels. E4 is a very good offensive buff as it increases the break effect of every other ally equal to 15% of the Trailblazer's own break effect stat. A full build and with buffs can generally reach 200% and above, so that's a 30% plus break effect teammate buff. Extra break effect sources that are applied or disappear during battle battle will also dynamically affect the buff value. E5 increases their ultimate and basic attack levels. And lastly, E6 adds two extra damage applications of their skill. It's an amazing final Eidolon as this effectively results in Trailblazer having faster imaginary breaking, stronger super breaks due to higher toughness damage, and increased energy generation as well since those two extra hits actually add six energy each for a total of 42 energy per skill cast. Now let's move on to relic builds starting with stats. You can generally go for HP or defense on their body and sphere for survivability and since attack isn't really important for them. However, if you have an attack piece anyway with really good substats, that's fine as well, albeit less comfy. For the boots, go for speed. With a 5-star speed piece and some speed rolls or a speed buff source, reaching 134 plus speed is fairly easy and a good baseline. Then you can go higher depending on your desired target breakpoint. For the rope, it's either break effect or ERR. Team, relevant equipment, and combat scenarios can change how much ERR is optimal for them. Triggering their talent's energy gain is also dependent on enemy count and how frequently you can break them. If you also use basic attacks more, that's less energy generation. It's also important to note that in general scenarios, you don't really need 100% ultimate uptime, particularly if the enemies aren't even broken yet, which can afford more leeway to generate energy. These factors vary quite a lot, but to simplify it, for general rotation comfort, you can go for an ERR rope, ideally with break effect stats. This will help cover the worst case energy scenarios. But if you notice that their energy generation can already be more than enough in most battles, if you're up against an energy abundant battle, or if you have other ERR or energy sources to compensate, then you can switch to a break effect rope instead to maximize offense. The last Eidolon is also a noticeable difference in energy generation that can help enable less ERR on a build, but you'll have to wait to unlock that first. When you have both pieces, you can always switch and personally test which works best in a given situation. For substats, look mainly for break effect and speed. Effect resistance is good for added CC and debuff protection. Defense and HP are also nice for added tankiness. Now for relic sets. First up is the perfectly suited 4-piece watchmaker set, giving break effect to the user and teammates after the wearer ults. That's stronger breaks for everyone, and it boosts any special break effect scaling abilities your team has. Just note that it doesn't stack with multiple sources. For full set alternatives, there's the 4-piece messenger if your team can make good use of the speed buff, or 
towards a very niche four-piece eagle set, which can let them advance after ultimates to get in faster actions. Of course, you can always go for a more flexible two-piece combo of break effect sets or break effect plus messenger for speed, or just whatever rainbow pieces you have for now so you can get the right main stats and best substats more easily. For planar ornaments, the Talia Kingdom of Banditry is an absolutely great general set for them as it gives more break effect. You'll want to hit its 145 speed requirement and a fast trailblazer is good anyways. It shares a world with Von Wack, so if you're farming Talia, you'll ideally also have good potential Von Wack users too for better farming efficiency. The usual support sets like Fleet and Broken Keel are still okay if you already have the right pieces or are currently focused on farming their worlds. They give team attack and crit damage buffs respectively, which is still something, but aren't focused on increasing break damage. The Pentagoni set gives ERR and an imaginary damage buff to teammates, so it's viable with imaginary teammates, but remember that the elemental damage percent bonus doesn't affect break damage, though it still benefits regular imaginary damage sources at least. The Trailblazer can have very niche uses for the Von Wax starting advance forward, like if you're trying to use them to quickly break imaginary weak enemies just in case you tried farming Talia but got viable Von Wack pieces too. Moving on to Light Cones. Your most free-to-play option is the Meshing Cogs to boost their energy generation. The low base attack doesn't matter as much, though the low base defense and HP affect their tankiness. The better version is Memories of the Past, which now gives break effect on top of extra energy. However, it is a gacha light cone, so getting super in positions is up to RNG, and if you have another user that also prefers this, like Run May, you'll have to share unless you have multiple copies. Anyways, it's definitely one of their best light cones. Dance 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 can also have great uses, as advancing teammate actions results in faster turn cycling, which can potentially mean faster breaks or more chances to inflict super breaks before an enemy recovers. For 5 stars, Run May's signature past self and mirror is of course very good for the break effect bonus, damage buff, SP recovery, and extra energy at the start of waves, assuming it's not locked to your Ruin Mei. If you pulled it on the standard banner or lost to it in the light cone banner, but the battle isn't over, it's still okay for its ERR bonus and the occasional SP refund, so superimposed cogs or memories are still better for energy generation. The damage bonus buff only matters if you have the right turn order. Now for team comp synergies. Again, let's just recap the criteria that lets Harmony MC perform best in. If your team elements are not properly tailored to efficiently counter enemy weaknesses in a certain battle, Harmony MC's kit will largely underperform. If you want to team with the right elements that will reliably and quickly break whatever enemy mobs or boss you're up against. Another point is that most units don't naturally incorporate break effect in their kit, and many DPS units would still much prefer the conventional crit scaling builds. While Harmony MC's kit still does something, as super breaks can still be an extra source of damage, with such teams and cases, Harmony MC is not the most ideal use scenario and other conventional supports are more suited. Instead, they shine the most with units who naturally benefit a lot with building break effect and from break-centric playstyles. First of all, one of her best teammates is none other than Ruan Mei, the premium break support, and their synergy is insanely good. She has break efficiency plus break effect buffs and can further extend the enemy's weakness broken state. These allow your team to have an easier time breaking enemies, which is an extremely helpful utility in a team focused on keeping enemies broken as much as possible. She also increases everyone's super break damage since their attacks have increased toughness damage and opens more chances to deal super breaks by keeping the enemy broken longer. Her 50% break efficiency team buff directly translates into a 50% damage increase for super breaks. Her team speed buff is always good, and in this case, it makes achieving the Talia set's 145 speed requirement easier for allies. It's a perfect deadly combo for break teams that actually make super breaks look like ultra breaks. For DPS examples with strong break synergies, Shui Yi is a top candidate as her entire kit has a strong emphasis on breaking enemies when you combine her ult, which deals a ton of toughness damage, and follow-ups which adds faster breaks and more toughness damage. Her build naturally wants break effect thanks to her conversion mechanics, so it's a perfect match. And as a quantum unit, entanglement means delaying the enemies to keep them broken longer. Her entanglement damage is strong thanks to her high break effect, but it's also backloaded since you have to wait and stack it first. But now, Shui Yi's break effect goes into those super breaks too, so that's just more damage dealt overall. She can also help brute force breaks in situations where an enemy isn't weak since her ult deals universal toughness damage, as well as her follow-ups if you have her E2. Sushan can deal a lot of toughness damage with her self-advanced combo, so she's effective at single target breaking. She can use a focused or hybrid break effect build that capitalizes on the physical breaks, but now super breaks are added to that. She is pretty skill point hungry though, so having her E1 and good SP economy are big considerations. It's
it's a somewhat similar case with a break Luka, who can inflict strong break bleeds and detonate them with his enhanced basic attack, on top of inflicting vulnerability to boost your entire team's damage. If you apply his regular bleed, break bleed, and vulnerability debuff on one target, then detonate those along with super break, he can hit pretty hard in single target. With Sampo, since his bounce skill can pile on so much toughness damage versus single target, that also results in great super break damage. He can be the one to break enemies to apply break wind shears, which he can also then detonate if you have his E4. Serval has this niche break play style where she combines both her attack scaling damage with lightning breaks and dots. Serval's ultimate is fairly spammable with its low cost, resulting in efficient lightning breaks in AoE scenarios. Boot Hill is the upcoming DPS in the second half of 2.2, and he was previewed as having a very break-centric kit and play style. As such, it's most likely that Harmony MC will have very good synergy with him. In pure fiction, Harmony MC can also work nicely with the Himiko Herta duo. You don't really build them for break effect, but the fact that they can break and attack very frequently in pure fiction mobs still makes good use of Super Break's extra damage. If you want extra support utilities to amplify Super Break damage, remember that the usual crit, attack, or damage bonus type buffs are ineffective on breaks. However, that doesn't make them entirely useless, as some units can be hybrid scalers on break effect anyway. But units that can apply defense, resistance, penetration, and vulnerability debuffs amplify breaks and regular damage as well. So it's a somewhat more consolidated way of buffing pure break units or hybrid scalers. Speed buffs are also good as fast returns can mean faster breaking and potentially more chances to deal super breaks. Supports that excel at shredding enemy toughness will be highly preferable as well, more so if building break effect complements their playstyle, turning them into potent damage dealers. For example, Asta's skill deals a lot of toughness damage, so it's good for breaking and super breaks on top of her speed buff. Silverwolf can implant weaknesses to open breaking opportunities and deal big toughness damage via her ultimate, as well as delay enemies with quantum breaks. There are also examples of supports that have very viable break effect builds, and now with Harmony MC, such builds become a much stronger option. Welt was also an interesting possibility. His skill can deal a lot of toughness damage. With a niche break effect build, his imaginary breaks can inflict more potent imprisonment breaks on top of his slow debuffs to keep enemies broken longer. Among sustains, Gallagher is the one that synergizes perfectly for this playstyle. He uses break effect to boost his healing and his enhanced basic attack can deal big super breaks. Gallagher's besotted effect also makes the target receive more break damage, which all his teammates can take advantage of. With that, he gets even more offensive value than he already had in the first place thanks to Harmony MC. He was, admittedly, my favorite sustain to comp with because of how seamlessly they complement one another. I even tried teams where there's no clear main DPS, but it's mainly just fulfilling the criteria of having break-focused units. I was surprised at how viable this can still be. With imaginary and or quantum breakers plus this break-focused playstyle, and since Harmony MC further helps delaying enemies, that enables more teams without a dedicated sustain by delaying the enemy's actions as much as possible. It's also great that you now have the option to use builds that mainly focus on stacking break effect stats on some DPS units, which can be arguably easier to farm for rather than having to balance the usual attack, crit, and damage stats. That opens up more build variety and makes pieces with break effect rolls have more use cases. Anyway, these aren't exhaustive and definitive recommendations, so if you have your own ideas and comps, feel free to share your thoughts. I really like that Harmony MC is one of those supports that really encourages experimenting with unconventional teams and revisiting old units, and most of all, likely marking the growth of the break meta as more break focus units release. Last are some auto battle observations. Like many units, Harmony Trailblazer uses their ult as soon as it's available. They'll do this even if there's still a turn of their ult buff remaining. This may not be a problem if the team or combat scenario can let them recharge quickly, but there can be situations where you would rather only ult once the enemy is broken or about to be broken so as not to waste its buff up time. Then Trailblazer generally seems to use their skill when you have 3 SP or more, then defaults to their basic attack if you have 2 SP or less, whether the targets are unbroken or not. It seems to have some consideration for your SP economy, which fortunately means you're less likely to run out of SP for your characters that really need it. However, this could also result in slower runs due to Trailblazer using their basic instead of their skill, which means slower breaking and less damage. And that's it for this Harmony Trailblazer guide. Let me know what you think of their new mechanics, if you're interested in building them, and what teams you might be trying out with them. If this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!